just a quick video here um, I'm already part way into the project because there's just too many things going on I couldn't get video of the disassembly but this is a Sony MHC GX250 bookshelf stereo it's got a three disc CD changer on it I actually bought this in early 2005 for my younger sister as a birthday present and uh, fairly recently the CD player quit working all together uh, you you try to play a disc and and uh, actually there's more than one problem the belt that drives the changer mechanism would slip so it wouldn't always clamp down on the disc I'm sure that's a lubrication issue because the belts pretty looks pretty good still so I'm going to take care of that um, but once it did clamp the disc all it would do is you would hear the uh, the laser lens like snap up and down trying to focus and the disc would start spinning really fast and you know, of course, it would never read, and it would just say no disc, and keep trying over and over. Well, basically, the laser, I'm assuming, went bad, just from age. So you go on eBay, and you can find a new laser unit for about ten bucks. This is a KSS 213D Sony optical pickup. I think it's the same as a KSS 213C except this has a dust cover that automatically covers the lens when it's in the home position. I'm not positive though if that's electrically interchangeable. But anyway, like I said, it's already taken apart. I'm going to try and show some of the reassembly as I'm putting it back together, but um, you know, I just got to get this pickup installed in here and, uh, and then install this assembly back in here and then I can put this all back together and I'll talk more about the build quality and stuff in just a little bit here. A couple notes on changing the optical pickup itself. To get it in or out you have to remove the gear that drives it which is this gear right here. On the bottom of that gear there is a like a snap and basically when the gear is down in this hole snaps in underneath and so you gotta reach in there with a small screwdriver or some pliers or something squeeze the tabs together pop the gear out very carefully make sure you don't get any dirt on the gear because it does have lubrication on it that will attract dirt then uh, to remove the old pickup the only thing that needs to be taken out is this metal rod that it rides on and there's a little piece of plastic right here with a little hole a little dimple in the top of it you just push it a little bit off to the side, slide the rod out, and then you can just unplug the ribbon cable and uh, change your pickup. It's really not that bad. Just make sure that when you put it in that the other rail on the side there is in its groove and you're all set. And before I put the drive gear back in, I'll show you how that shutter works. Basically when it's when it's not playing and it goes back to home position, it slides that cover over the lens to keep it clean. So I'm going to go ahead and put this gear back in. It just snaps in place. And this is how the CD player would normally sit when it's idle. So now I'm going to put this assembly back in here. Just showing a bit of the assembly process here. Basically you just got to sit the player assembly back in the plastic cradle. It's got those green rubber mounts that it, it rides on. You just slide it back down so that the rubber mounts go over the posts without getting folded over or anything like that. There's a small spring that you sit on each post next and then after that you can put the screws in. An interesting note is that there's only three of these plastic caps that cover the springs. The fourth one only has a washer on the screw and that's, that goes on the back corner over here. I'm not sure why they did it differently, but there's got to be a good reason otherwise they would have put a cap on all four. And uh, of course don't forget to plug in the ribbon cable. Make sure you don't got it folded. Make sure it's exactly the way it was before. And go ahead and put the screws in. Okay, all the screws are installed now, and you can see again that that one in the corner there doesn't use the plastic spring retainer. I'm not really sure why, but uh, 
with all this assembled you, you can snug up all the screws because those go down all the way into the plastic and then the player still floats on its spring mounts so let me take a look at this uh, changer mechanism make sure this doesn't need added lubrication I'm not sure why the belt is slipping um, a note on lubrication for CD players let me uh, grab something here you cannot use anything petroleum based on a CD player not only will the petroleum eventually harm the plastic but it also um, it dries up and gets very sticky over time will actually cause things to bind up instead of move more freely so I use something called phono lube from my understanding this is called a polymer grease it's like a synthetic plastic type of grease it, um, no petroleum in it so it won't, won't react with plastic, it won't dry up, it won't get sticky. Um, I, I know there's better things out there for CD players. Uh, they have a you know, dedicated lubricant for CD players that's even thinner than this, but this stuff works just fine, you know, in my experience. And it's easy to get to. MCM sells it, uh, places like that. So some of it goes on these pivots down here and some of it goes in this plastic drive wheel that pushes the, the player cradle up and down. So I'm going to check all that, make sure that's not dry. And also take a look at the belt. Unfortunately, I don't have my rubber, uh, rubber cleaner with me, so I'm going to have to improvise if the belt needs to be cleaned. But let me uh, take a look at this thing and I'll get it reinstalled in the, in the stereo casing here. Here's a look inside the stereo. It's actually pretty cool in here. There's some cheap stuff and there's some good stuff. It's only got a single motor cassette deck, very run of the mill. Circuit boards, you know, nothing special. I've seen a lot worse, but they're not very, uh, very thick or heavy gauge or anything. But what blew me away was the size of the power transformer. It's, it's massive for a stereo like this. Uh, bigger than a lot of uh, standalone receivers I've worked on actually and the amplifier is actually pretty big too uh, I can't read the number on the IC down there otherwise I'd look up the actual rated wattage for that particular IC but I'm not going to tear the components off there in front of it just to see what it is but that has a big heat sink that sticks out the back with a cooling fan above it judging by the size of the transformer the thing's got to be at least 50 watts per channel kind of funny though they got a, a video pass through jack on here um, so you can plug something into the front of it and they didn't even use a shielded cable for the video signal it's just this little black and red wire here that's tied along this harness so that, that was kind of funny I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this back together now and see if the new laser pickup is gonna fix the problem Well, it appears that I got a defective laser. Um, wasted a lot of time putting that together, taking it apart, uh, putting it back together, figuring I just had a bad connection or something, but um, that new laser just didn't read at all. In fact, it did the same thing the old one was doing. And I, uh, I took the laser pickup out of this old CD player that was actually in a bar. I mean, this thing was a mess. But it used a nearly identical pickup, the KSS-213C, which, like I said, I was pretty sure it was the same thing, but without a dust cover. And uh, put it in there, and it worked just fine. So, um, that brand new laser I got is just a dud. I was thinking about maybe taking a, a laser. I got a whole bunch of these old players that, uh, some of them are just parts units, and I was thinking maybe I was going to take a laser and put it in here so I could put this thing back together, but... I really want to put a brand new one in so I think I'll just wait and see if I can get a replacement for the second time. So stay tuned for part two. Here it is working with that old laser that came out of that, that uh, dual tray player. And uh, it just it really disappoints me that that brand new laser I got was no good. I wasted a lot of time uh, taking this thing apart, putting it back together. You know, troubleshooting it, thinking I was doing something wrong. 
But uh, I guess once in a while you do get bad brand new parts. So I got half mind to leave this old laser in here, but it'd be kind of a waste. You know, I'd rather have a brand new one, you know, once I get one that works at least and uh, just do it right. You know, this, this laser was used in a bar and it's just, it's a mess. It's got a ton of hours on it, but at least I know the rest of the stereo is still good and that there's no damage to the control circuitry. And, you know, I was starting to lose my sanity there for a little bit thinking that, you know, there was a broken ribbon cable or I had something just plugged in in the wrong spot. Cause, uh, you know, it's, it's been a really rough week for me. I'm, I'm out of it, I'm tired, I'm just exhausted and, and uh, just not myself this week. Too much stuff going on. So this was kind of frustrating for me, but I think all I gotta do now is get a laser that I know is good and put this doggone thing back together. I always thought it was so neat how the uh, the laser, the servos on the laser are so precise and they can follow the disc as it wobbles. It's just pretty neat. Oops, I bumped it. You can see the laser moving up and down just a little bit. Well, I decided since I was going to be getting a refund for that other laser that I'd go ahead and leave the used one in there that came out of that uh, other CD player. Actually, it didn't come out of that, that player in particular that was in the video. It's just the same model because I had a whole bunch of those players and some were just parts units. But anyway, uh, just a couple quick tips on putting these back together. The bezel that goes on the front of the CD tray just slides down from the top and locks in place just like a uh, faceplate on a computer CD-ROM, just only only bigger. And um, there's only one screw that needs to be put in before any covers go on, and that's this silver one here that holds the faceplate on, and also that holds the CD player in. And there's behind this cover here, actually behind these holes. There's three three more silver screws that hold the CD player in that, that have to go in before the top goes on. And then the top lid goes on after that because that also shares the screw holes with the side panels. And the side panel goes on a lot like a computer case cover. It just kind of, you sit it in place, uh, make sure it's flat against the surface and then lock it forward. And then there's three black screws that hold that cover on. All of the screws on this thing are silver, except for the ones on the side panels. So it's, it's pretty easy to remember where everything goes and it's actually quite easy to service for, you know, how, how modern it is. So hopefully this laser will last a while, but if not, I'll just change it again. But thanks for watching.